music was the winner to me. I, yeah. I, I liked music. I mean, I liked watching people freestyle or battle, but really, I loved a tribe called Quest, or I loved Kanye West, or I loved music, like Kanye, you know, they say you could rap for anything except for Jesus, like, like he couldn't even get the words out right, <laughs> but like, yeah. I felt that so much though, <laughs> it was like, yes, you know what I mean, and so it's like, sometimes to me, like, the less technical things are the greatest ones. KillerKellerOfficial.com <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct central London or essential as you need to be. All components locked. We're going overseas. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight, everybody. It's got the uh, Kellervision app. Free download iPhone, Android from your app store for your street culture sports. The sporting art products you can grab as well. Talking of products to grab, Unlearning Volume 1 comes out on the 25th of June by this gentleman here. And my God, is it a pleasure. Because on the other end, we have a very vital component of the hip-hop culture, okay? If, what you want to be when you go up was not the B-boy if you did not have this man in your mind, in your mindset. He's one of the five key components of my childhood and growing up and also being a part of the scene which we orbited around. It's a pleasure to have him on board. Producer, MC, extraordinaire, B-boy for life, the evidence. How are you, my Great. brother? Great. Thank you for that introduction. Tell me that wasn't the introduction that was specified. Yeah, you know, the bar is high on introductions. You know, there's Sway, there's Kwali. They're, they're, they're doing big introductions nowadays. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be very, very real with you. I feel like your production is in a handful of the higher echelon, which often, because of your lyrical skills, because of your, because the spotlight on intro was all about the emceeing, I think it often, it doesn't get the full fucking shine. And and that's crazy to me because it's totally, totally falling in line with what's going on right now with the Conway the Machines. Like, I feel like this is just, this is like a huge forward thrust in a sound that you kind of paved the way for. I don't know. Um, there's a wide array of people who have inspired many. So if I'm on anyone's list, it's a true honor, honestly. Uh, my production has been something that I never fully controlled my own narrative of. Um, and I, I'm going to change that. And we can talk about what's going to happen. But it's something that I truly love. Honestly, you could ask anybody who's been around me, the production, whether I was making the beat or not, it's just I was the first one in the studio, the last one in the studio. Every time I'm the guy who goes to mastering, I'm the sequencer with, along with whoever else. I, I'm just very interested in production and from all aspects, even coaching vocals, you know, and not even making beats, um, the whole other side of production. But, and you know, my best friend, one of my best friends of all time is Alchemist. So there's there's no uh, lack of inspiration around me. It's it's a, a well that's pretty full. And, and so the production side hasn't, the notoriety of the production never kicked in as much as I would have liked, but I also came up around the era where the producer was more, I would say, closer to what the engineer is now. It wasn't always like, get your, your roses for being a producer. A lot of producers did a lot of work and never got the recognition before the era, I would say, ushered him through Kanye West and other people that really made the producer like an artist, you know? Mm, and so... Real. Yeah. And so, you know, um, I'm working on that and we, we, I don't know if now's the time or we talk about it later in the interview, but don't let me forget it. If it comes back later, um, what my plans are for the future with my production. Future is everything, man. A well-rounded B-boy artist architect um, you are. And if you go into the catalog of evidence, you know, beyond the dilated peoples, it's, I'm, it's uncharted. It's crazy the levels in which you do go in, into the studio. I mean, all that said, you know, as a song, the new joint, you you said it, you coined it perfectly. Like you're 
wondering now why you paid so much to you know polish so many tunes. You know what I mean? It's because too much reverb. My dad and I was fucking reverb. <laughs> What's it called? The the DFA fader. You know this one, right? The do fuck all fader. <laughs> it's fake. Yeah, it's fake as fuck. Like, what is when, it? The when, fader that does nothing. The fader does nothing. They, they turn call it down. It the barber stripe fader. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, fight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. Um, but you know, those are life lessons in the career of an artist. Do you know what I mean? And you've got to have earned the ten thousand hours. And going through your catalog, looking deep into the the lineage of it, it's it's three sixty, man. It's like you. It's like you're a, a funnel. A, a, you're like a. a a funnel of creativity from a, from a B boy era, from a from the now B boys now, the hip hop of now. You know what I mean? It's the, the the lineage is crazy. Yeah, that's just. I mean, to be a student, having a true love for what you're doing, really loving the music, not uh, not doing it for for anything else. And um, I guess it sounds a little keep it real when you're talking about you know. I don't do music for money or I don't, I don't make music for bitches or I don't, I no, nah, bro. I just sit here. And, but sadly, that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> like I, I make beats and I make music first thing every day is what I love. Somehow when you do that, you find like-minded people monetarily, you'll be able to handle things and you might get laid too. And it might happen. So um, <laughs> do it for the right reason and, and the rest will come. I always believe that. For real. So let's take it back. Let's go back from the beginning. So Venice Beach, am I correct in saying? Yeah, I, I was uh, I was born in Hollywood. Lived there for a year. I don't remember that, obviously. And then my parents moved to Santa Monica, which is a neighboring city of Venice, which was nicer. And then a uh, typical story, a divorce. And I moved with my mom to where she can afford. And that was Venice. So that's... Uh, Probably, you know, that that's what me told me everything and gave me the, all, all the information that I push out is all from what I saw in, in this place coming up. Yeah. Um, what what was the influences back then? What were the how did you first what was your first introduction to hip hop and and the culture? Uh, graffiti uh, before that, seeing people dancing, you know, and um ask you know seeing a circle and people dancing at the beach and then uh me being with my mom or, or my father and then they could see how interested i was in this song or enhanced i mean uh, in a trance by it and so but they probably asked some you know for me and then we're going to uh the warehouse or music plus or tower records or these places mm -hmm. that were selling you know cassettes and they're buying that song or that album for me with that song on it that I like so much. And then I'm running around the house to imitate that. And so just a lot of imitation. Um, I've said it before. I think I'm lucky when, you know, when, uh, when Beach Street came out, Wild Style, you know, Crush Groove, all that shit, mm. it was all based, we had Breaking, that was based on the West Coast. The, all the prominent movies that were the good ones to me were all based on the, the culture of New York and east coast and hip-hop's origin where it started um i was lucky enough to when i saw those movies it wasn't like i was it was totally foreign to me because i was my neighborhood was lit up with graffiti there was dudes dancing they might have been pop locking more than they might have been breaking but there was still the same thing happening you know and so mm. it really wasn't like i lived in a in a rural suburb somewhere and i had never seen this i was like oh yeah that's what i'm doing at the beach to me and so it, it kind of like reaffirmed what i was seeing with, was dope you know mm. so I, was, I was all the way in but for a long time i wasn't trying to participate in the culture i was maybe i was through graffiti um but i was skateboarding i was doing all the shit that that comes with venice beach you know and then when i moved next door to qd3 who was quincy jones son who was a prominent rap producer at the time Crazy. You know, yeah. So, yeah one of the greats and so I, then i got invited into his garage like i'm sitting in now which i basically copied and um in a house in venice right like my whole shit is qd3 <laughs> basically and, uh, <laughs> and 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 i saw how rap was getting made and not only that i saw rappers who i had heard of and seen and mm. some of them really big ones coming through so it was everlast got to see 
ice cube in the driveway next to my house. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? And shit like this. Yeah, like, what the fuck? And because of that, all my friends knew. And so they want to come over. So maybe we're there. We could go smoke, drink, listen to do graffiti, listen to fucking dope rappers, producers. It was like a 12-year-old's, what the fuck? You know what I mean? That brought Alchemist over. That brought Will I Am over. That brought Red Foo over. That brought DJ AM. All these people coming through because QD3 next door to me. Yeah, that's a that's a Probably dream. really didn't like me that much. To be honest, man, nobody really liked me. Why? <laughs> Explain just, why. You just go to Ev's house, then you go to the QD3 house. <laughs> nobody had a rap studio at that time. There was no, that was unheard of, you know? Uh, but this was a golden era of hip hop that, you know, was literally just passing passing through the doors. And that must just have, ugh, it must have just blown your mind with what was potentially possible from within those within those four walls yeah and then i took some beats i got from him and ran around the city like i got beats from qd3 and that's how i met Raka. yo let's do i got qd3 beats let's do it that led to dilated and so yeah i i owe uh q a nice dinner not <laughs> not, not fake nice like benny hunt is like real nice like something really- <laughs> yeah you know the proper stuff <laughs> the, 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 the stuff that some royalties are made of yeah, yeah. um the dilated people era of your career, which is where I think internationally most um, most people will recognize your voice, the name, the, the 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 principles of what dilated was to a lot of people was a bit of a roll call. It was a it was a war cry. It was a war cry from a from a b boy perspective. Do you know what I mean? No, elaborate. Well, because the way that it came across. Um, the overseas and landed you know it was it was of the raucous records era um and i'm talking more about you know i'm talking more about the 12 inch eps and the 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 just that transferal of the backpacker era for sure we had a we had a good role in that part you know dropping work the angles and third degree and triple optics and main event and all that those yeah. 12 inches and mini eps rang out so hard we ended up getting a record deal through it you know so it it was it was an early lesson about independence, and I, unfortunately, I strayed away from it as we got to deal with capital, you know. But I'm grateful because it was still the root of what I did. The, the The fundamentals of that never left us. And so when I returned to that off of a major label and went back to starting Evidence independently, I had already been there before, and so it wasn't. It, I'm grateful for that. Yeah, because you'd already walked. The, you've already run the course. Yeah. What was the what was the deal with um, removing yourself somewhat from the the major label situation? You mentioned that. What 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 was the th- thought behind that? We didn't remove ourselves. Actually, um, we're we're kind of um, an anomaly in the sense that we were on Capitol Records, yeah, which really wasn't a rap label when we went there. They had Beastie Boys, about it, mm-hmm. and. Um, we went there for that reason. We had choices. We could have gone to Interscope or other places that had offered us that were more seasoned in rap. Right. But we liked the openness of capital and, and the money was better. So we went there. But um, we finished our fucking contract with them. Four albums. And the fifth album was slated to be a live album or a best of album. Gotcha. So we, yeah, we finished our contract. Like literally, like crazy. That's mad. Not a lot of people do that. So there was no calling for to like go find another label and continue that by the time it was done, saw where we fit into this game and living a pipe dream to try to continue that. It wasn't going the direction of us at that time. Yeah, you hear those stories. Oh, actually, sometimes you, you witness it, don't you? You see acts and bands play out in a certain way. We were just like, yeah, man, like that doesn't feel natural. <laughs> you know? Yeah, not everybody is meant for a fucking big label. Um, and, with, and with that said, I would tell everybody to try to sign to a big label. A lot of people say, well, you know, you're smart and you've learned this independence and, and there's way more money to be made over in the independent for what you're doing. And there's a lot of truth to that. There really is. But how would you really know if you might work well in a major system? You might make a hit fucking record. You might it might bring you all everything you ever dreamed about. So if it didn't pan out. It worked well. We made a career. I own a house. I'm, things worked out well, but the the it wasn't the best fit for us. For other people, it might be the best fit. So, I would say if you're young, 
go for that shit. Find out. You know what I mean? You've got to go through the experience. You've got to have the, you've got to cut your chops and learn that stuff for it. Super yes. important. Why, why, why not find out? Yeah. So moving on from there, you know, getting into, getting into the more um, independent stuff once again, and your own individual um, music. If it's certainly, this is certainly where the 360 of evidence kind of kicked in. You know, this is where it felt like you had, you had harnessed all the lessons that you'd learned up in, in, in these kind of early stages. And with the first album with dilated being on the major, this kind of, this kind of formed your, for me personally, when I, when I even listen back to it now, it's like, yo, this is so much more well refined. It's almost like you had the, the idea was being tweaked all uh, throughout the uh, throughout the journey. The craziest part about Dilated Peoples is the best songs on every album to me were our solo songs. We always had one or two each where I wouldn't be on Rocket's song and he wouldn't be on mine. And those really, well, I wouldn't say they're the best. They had the most identity. Mm. Because Rocket could really, he didn't have, Rocket wants to speak on wild shit. He's very educated, smart. He wants to warn people on certain shit, other shit he wants to subliminally throw at you. He's very calculated and, and a great writer with a great rhythm. So, and a great voice. Rock is amazing. So the, the, when he got to just do him by himself, I think he shined. And when I got to be myself, I think I finally, I was coming through as this is who I am. And so I think going solo was the smart thing you know, doing solo records, not going solo, but doing solo records was a way for us to finally establish who we were as individuals, not just with the hair and the one who jumps in the crowd and the, and the cool DJ. You know. What I mean? Yeah, I got. I got to. I got to go with you on that one because there was a lot that was going on. What you know, big up Rucker, big up um, Babu, because and Babu had had his thing going on with Beat Junkies, and then Rucker had his thing going on. You know, and it was. For me, it had this kind of like Wu Tang esque formation. Do you know what I mean? Where you could go about doing individual projects. You know, this was almost like the launch pad, right? Yeah, that's platform. That's what I called it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The pl- sorry, sometimes for everybody watching, there's a little latency sometimes. So if we talk over each other, it's I love you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah there is, isn't it? <laughs> on the on the platform. On the platform, there's a, uh, you know, on the liner notes, it says, look out for our solo albums coming soon. And that's 2000, right? Yeah. So my solo didn't happen until 2007. Yeah, that's right. And man, yeah. And they, but m- maybe this is one part of the, I mean, would this be contributive to like being on a major label that, that things can sometimes be staggered where if you're, on, you know, you're independent, the reaction is a lot more quicker? Mm. I'm still learning independent, honestly, because there's different levels of independence. I think people need to realize that it's not just, it's a broad, you know, it's, you can't just stroke it and it covers everything. It is, there's labels who are independent, who are, are acting as mini majors. Mm. There's some people who are independent who are literally doing everything themselves, everything. So it's, it goes from DIY all the way up to like solid district distribution, marketing and promotion, video budgets, etc. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And everything could, could can stand in the way of time, can't it? So the smallest thing could trigger like a, a, a crazy delay. Um, it just depends on what works for you. If, you. if you're down to not just be the musician and be the, the boss and do everything, go to the plant and improve your records and artwork and registering songs, BMI and ASCAP and getting your shit on streaming and videos and your YouTube channel. If you want to do it all yourself, and there's a lot of artists who do that, especially right now more than ever, you're going to control the narrative of what you're doing the best. There's no filter between you and them. The problem with that is it'll be more limited, Mm -hmm. smaller. But lately I've been contemplating and figuring out is smaller and passionate more powerful than big numbers and kind of airy. You know, I, I do think, feel you. I feel you, and I um, and maybe, maybe and on a money level too. On a money level too, not on on on, on a real business level too, not just yeah. props. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, I do know what you mean. Um, there's th- this this will probably sound like a high class problem for 
but I'm I'm thinking perhaps as as artists that are already established going down an independent route actually doesn't fare too bad if you've already established a name if you know for independent artists that are trying to get on board now like you said I think the major label route actually you should really give it a shot do you do you want some people got to touch the pot and get burned some some got to do it you know yeah, I'm feeling that. Um, and also, a lot of major labels, they do pull off the tricks that a lot of independent labels do naturally through the struggle. There's they, that. Well, yeah. Industry planting or whatever, right? Industry plant, that yeah. type of shit. Yeah. Like you're signed for two years. You're, you've been signed here for two years, but we won't say anything. Or we'll sign you, but we won't tell anybody for a couple of years. We'll fund it, but we'll kind of make it appear like it's growing organically. Totally. Um, that's really what a high-level independent level label is anyway so yeah that's true that's like their minor leagues you know what i mean before you go to the majors or whatever i'm not mad at that if anything that's kind of like artist development a little bit i kind of fuck with that oh yeah that's true it is it's a slow burn isn't it it is the it is the development space the the holding pad for trying out ideas on a retainer (laughs) music still got to be good they got to translate either way so you know either it's going to work or it isn't that shit always scared me back in the day, you know, the idea of a development deal and then knowing full well that the the, 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 the the money numbers are ticking away, you know what I mean? Different time. Yeah, there was no internet. Thinking. There was no internet to, to, to confirm that you were onto something. Yeah. You only, get, you only get that through a show or through wherever you go to try to get yourself validated. So it's, it's interesting. We've gone down this road a little bit, actually, because... The creative space now with the internet means that individuality, which is what hip hop found, has founded itself on, it's, it's it's forefathers, you know, they ingrained in our head that style and individuality is everything. Like with with the uh, internet, the way it is, it's almost like, well, I'll give it three days before it's been plagiarized. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, I mean, it moves faster. But I love the A to B shit, man. I just love that you can feel something, put it there, and let it fly. You know, it's and it's, it's the like, best, yeah. It's fucking so dope, man. So dope. Like, yeah, so good. Makes you feel alive, doesn't it? The downside is, is like you expect that everyone from your IG or from your Twitter is gonna know. But that's the problem, is like one tweet. Or like one post is not enough sometimes to get where you want it to go in your mind. So then you have to figure it out. It's not like it broadcasts to a broader to a broader thing. It's just for your people who are really engaged. And say you have a hundred thousand followers on something. How many of those are really maybe five thousand, mm-hmm. eight, three? You know what I mean? And so it's like that's where like these labels and these other people pick up after you, and they can help push it and that's why they're good is because they can get it out but like i was saying before well maybe you don't want to reach everybody maybe you're not into fucking going to the club and pulling on girl shirts and trying and trying and trying you know and maybe you just want to fucking kick it and push it out there and see where it goes and i think there's something really powerful from what i'm seeing with alchemist and a lot of my homies who are really once again controlling their narrative by putting the music out through their shit the way they want how they want yeah and 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 training their audience and training the audience to be like this is how it's getting done over here yeah like maybe it doesn't reach quite as far but it's reaching far though it really is it is and you're absolutely right and this is what i was kind of coming to at the start like you're part of a new wave of people that do control the narrative and uh, i'm 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 hazarding through my personal experience that the experience of the past actually, you know, it gives you more incentive to own that shit. But, you know, West Side Gun, Conway the Machine, Static Selector, all these people, Alchemist without question, like these people that that you are, 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 you know, running parallel with and collaborating and working alongside. This is like the new, it's, it's the new call to arms. And it is all about owning your narrative. I think that's so important, you know, just to be able to control it because having a meeting of a bunch of people talking about your shit in a boardroom and you're not there and they're all just, they have a job and a salary and, you know, 
it's gonna get fucked up somehow. They're gonna fuck it up. Yeah. Now, can they get it a little bigger than you could have? Maybe they can. And that's why maybe it works. You know what I mean? But at the same time, it's like, man, look at the people who took their shit and, and kept it. Uh, they're they're after they leave Earth. They they you know what I mean? They really did it the way they want to do it. And so um, yeah. Salute to them and salute to the people who do it through the big system and have success also. Dude. Yeah, Whatever yeah. your goal is, really. And like you say, I think it's about balance, you know, and moderation within your career, knowing when to turn the heat up and go down that road and, and when to preserve and um, honor, you know, the integrity of, of your name and the brand and the, the narrative and, you know, all these things come into play, don't they? 100%. And it ain't just the music, it's everything else too, you know? Do people like you? They mm -hmm. buy into you as a human. You know, a lot of people who could rap, like rap, rap for real. I produce people all day. I've seen crazy shit. I've also seen people who've blown my mind who couldn't figure it out. Yeah, that's a heartbreak. That can be quite heartbreaking, can't it? Crazy. crazy. <laughs> it ain't just music. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's more than, it's a, it's a, you know, you can't bottle it, but it, but you kind of know what it is. And it's, it's it, sometimes it just hits you and you're just like, wow, that's, they got it. But then do they have to, dis can they go the distance? I love that when I get it. Oh, man. Yeah, as a producer, as a producer, yeah. you must actually spend a lot of time um, cultivating and, and building up projects with particular, I mean, <sighs> I mean, Baldy James, the uh, feature on the new single, all of that said, he he most definitely is a new act in in my ears. You as a producer, that must be the the the, the greatest gift to be able to introduce an artist. I'm not, you know, he had, he put out an album last year. It was revered. It's one of the high albums of the year. Um, right. Called "The Price of Tea in China," produced by Alchemist. And I was featured on a song called Grey October, and we shot a video for it. So this is really a continuation of somebody who I'm new to building with, but um, really love what they're doing. And Boldy is cold, man. He's just a cold rhymer, man. And and beyond that, a dope motherfucker. Like, really fuck with Boldy. And, wow. And so, yeah. Like, he's great, bro. And he put me on his shit. Like, yo, it's like super honor. And so, like, when I... When I was making this one, that song, all of that said, was going to be the intro to the album. It was just me, uh, one verse. And then I was like, you know what? No, fuck that. And we're putting Baldy on this shit. And then he ate it up, showed up for the video for me, just proved his that he's a G and, and he's solid, man, like that. And he, he's going to continue to grow. Trust me, if you haven't heard, you're kind of late a little bit because he's doing his thing. God damn it, I'm late on that one. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That there's so much content coming out at the moment. That's that's what I'm talking about. He's building his world right now. You know what I mean? Not everyone yeah. knows to join it on the day that he says it's open. Maybe it take that's the beauty of this independent. And now you might go back and you're gonna That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and then you might be on the team, like like not just like fair weather in a minute if you keep jumping in and then now he got a new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's right. And it's like it's beautiful, like how that shit really works. It's a slower burn, but it could be iller. Yeah, you're right. You're right, and it, it, you're you're. It's so organic and cool. And can I just go go back to the to the tune, man? Like like all that said, man. For it to have been an introduction, I can understand. I, I can I can picture it. But bro, like when I hear that beat, it just takes me straight to LA. It's like it's got that epic Americana heavy. Like ah, uh, it's Rock sick, bro. <laughs> that shit is hard it's hard yeah it's sure. <laughs> super hard um yeah and that that's one of the few ones i produced on the album you know so that was tight got to see my vision mm. all the way through from the beginning to the to the mix yeah it's it's fire talk to me about the production um the technical side of it like what do you look for what do you look for in beats and sounds and samples um this is one of the most broadest questions on the planet, by the way. So you can go as deep yeah, as no, you want. No. I mean, yeah, I look for shit that I like. Um, but no, really, that, that, that's a good question because there's a there's so much to that. Um, 
I'm into nuance lately. Mm. I'm, I'm into, I've moved into what's under the hood of a car. So before, or a lot of people, you want to drive a car, right? You just give a fuck if it works or not. That's what you, mm. that's why you like a car. But there's a whole world of people who talk about the hood and the wires they used and what's connecting to this and this piece right here and how it works with that. And yeah. that's like a secret society of people who are all interested in the engine of the car. Yeah. And so I've moved, I've, I feel like I've moved into that conversation, some nerd shit with the people that I talk about these little intricacies and these little nuances that are gigantic to me that mm -hmm. everyone else just hears as normal, you know? And so when I talk about this type of stuff, you could end up sounding kind of like an idiot. Um, because it's like I'm talking about the level of the brightness of the snare or these drums are sitting too on top and this could be blended or, you know, things that just like um, a movie editor can't go watch a movie because they're looking at the cuts of every movie. And, oh, yeah. that didn't dissolve. and I'm just watching the movie. I just like the movie. I don't the fuck you're talking about but they're watching it like i can't even bear this look the sky in this scene doesn't match to the sky in this scene. you know what i mean and it's like i've moved into that place where it's i'm all into the intricacies and so um what i look for is is um innovation but not like reinventing the wheel innovation like wow look at how this dude is filtering this shit or look at the, mm. how this, segue is going into this or look at how they're making the, the drums are there but look how they made it sound like it's part of the loop instead of a big boom beat and all these little things that really nobody gives a shit about you know but that's what i'm looking for right now and so well, it's, it's gonna make my shit interesting on that side you know yeah it's the it's the devil in the detail it's the things and it, you know the, if there's a problem someone will tell you if there isn't a problem they they don't say nothing is you're working on that premise of like just making the thing so on the money that it that it it becomes fluid, isn't it? It's the it's the production value that takes it to that place where the heads that really know production will give you a head nod, like yeah, I see you. <laughs> right, or making conscious decisions. Like I I've, I think I've proven I know how to make a mix and I know how to make something that'll play good in a big room you know what i mean and mm. sound compete or if we ever got on the radio that we wouldn't just drop off when our shit came on like i i did a lot of that throughout my career but i'm really kind of i guess what you're saying is coming back to a full circle i'm 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 almost like doing my new demo if that makes any sense yeah and I, and listen ev i i feel like in this conversation there's a lot of skirting and back and forth and i i feel like my motives behind this is because there is a new, there's a new, it's like, there's, it's a life of many lives in a career sense. And you're in this place now where for those people that hadn't checked you for a minute and are jumping back in, they'll be forgiven. Like you, your lane is so tight. You, it's almost like you've, you're still evidence, still doing it. It's almost like you're, you can picture where you are. It's it, the, 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 na the narrative hasn't changed, but what has significantly changed is the approach. Mm, I agree. The like you're saying, like the production, like you still, you still wear the, the baseball caps. You still um, roll with the polo, polo shirt when you need to. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? There is hair under there. Just for yeah. <laughs> but it's like, it's four wheel drive. So, so in putting it in context with what uh, my audience, I guess, would either know you from or know you of, it's like, it's crazy the, the similarities, but, the, but they are so many different mini lives within yours. It's, it's actually, it's such an intriguing conversation. Uh, evolving publicly. You know? Yeah, 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 for sure. It's weird. It's weird. But you know, it's it's. What else am I gonna do? Not just, just stay in a room and then try to unveil it all at one time. That's not gonna work. So my influences are huge. Um, when I was younger, my age, I was always the youngest out of a whole crew of people older. So my inst would manifest on the microphone through trying to be harder, trying to be deeper or trying to be something never, mm -hmm. never not being who I was just not being like 
truly who I could be. Uh, you, you know, you'll have a, you'll have like a, a kid who's hanging out with, the, with older kids and he's stepping, you know, he's tripping over his shoelaces and he's weird. But then you see him in his environment with his friends and he's the man over there. <laughs> He's not even acting like the same person he's acting over here because he's free. You know what I'm saying? He's really yeah. being who he is. I, like I was doing a lot of the of the other way for a long time. So there's what I don't regret is that there was nothing I ever said or did anything that wasn't who I was. There's no, I didn't front to be anything else. But never. I can I just do not. But I was putting putting sauce on it that didn't need sauce on that. So finally, now you get older, the voice is deeper, more confident in who I am. Yeah. Um, father, you know, all kind of different shit where it's like, I feel like I could finally give the audience who I am and maybe they'll like it better or worse, but it'll be more redeeming to me to put it out. And share yeah, it. bro. Um, I, I feel like I hope for, um, well, I really hope for, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. I really hope for, artists to develop themselves and continue their journey without feeling floundered by obstacles or having to deal with stuff that they don't need to and still manage to make it over the finishing line of a project and they're able to continue so they've learned like what we're talking about here is evidence in 2021 that has suddenly he's you own your own skin because of the experiences you've been in. And a lot of artists have that, you know, when they get to a point with no return, they're, they're comfortable with the skin they're in. If you can make it to that point. Um, I think it's a transparent era right now to, to try to hide behind a middleman and have them groom your, groom your images. It's just so obvious for me. Yeah. So yeah. best to just ride out with who the fuck you are and find the people who like you for who you are. I think that's the best time right now. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, Cause regrets don't become regrets, do they? The regrets are just like, they're, they're things that happen that you learn from. And um, was, is there, was there a point in that you can define in, in your career span where you were just like, Oh, well, this is me now. The solo stuff when I, the weatherman LP in my, my 2007 record that felt like, I could control my narrative. And if you listen to Crown of Thorns, which was Rocker's solo album, slept on record. Oh, shit. Man, that shit, I'm proud yeah. of him on record. It's great. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. uh, he, uh, you know what I mean? And that's where the dilated umbrella was beautiful. It was like, okay, we're still dilated peoples, you know, but you, you, you're the man for that. And I'm doing me over here. I had the song from my mom, I Still Love You. I, you know, so mm. my mom passed in 2004. I was trying to figure shit out. I yeah. made that song. We had the dilated album 2020 that had Back Again and You Can't Hide, You Can't Run and mm -hmm. some good songs on it. People fucked with that shit. Yeah. I, want, I wanted to put this solo song on about my mom passing away. Rock and Babu were all for it. Whatever you want to do, bro, it's your solo song. Cool. I put it on, played the sequence. That shit sounded fucked up. And I was like, oh, yeah, I haven't establish my identity because I can't even talk about a song with my mom and without it sounding fucked up and like we're at, coming out of left field you know with Whoa. all these anthems, you know and so that's why I was like I want to make a solo record Weatherman yeah. I made that that became the last song on that album and it felt right and so I was like yes okay now here I am so like just because of that song was like what led me to the solo uh, career wow that's crazy man yeah um, did because you know once you once you established your individuality in your own solo career, I mean this you you know you would you had been collaborating with the likes of Kanye, you you know you'd already been you were already in the mix with certain movers and shakers. You mentioned uh, Will I Am, who you know who from my accounts and what I remember, he was a b boy as much as a as a rapper. Like crazy. Yeah, I mean, and he used to battle the fuck out, but he people used to, you know, they they knew him as a battle rapper as well. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. He used to battle Ahmad. You know, I don't know if you know Ahmad, but he had a crazy rapper from LA. But he had a song back in the day when I was young. I'm not a kid. Of course, he yeah. Everyone knows him for that, but I know him as a sick MC. Mm. Will I am Ahmad would battle every day. 
like, yeah, they, it was aggressive. It was that time. Brand Nubian was out. Shit, it was different. Oh, that's crazy. Your collaborations were right across the board, man. Like, what was it like working with, with Kanye at the time? That was cool. It was, um, it was just early. It was before all the shit. So I just got to see it different side of him and mm. um in all fairness man people say he's wild and crazy but he was he was the before anybody knew him so that's just how he is he that's not an act you know yeah, so. yeah it yeah, was yeah. a little different it was a little different when he was demanding all this shit and and he nobody knew him so he sounded like a crazy person but now that it worked out he just sounds like uh what prophetic or what was the word we predict the future? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Prophecy, like the, yeah. Yeah, prophecy man. You know what I mean? He fucking he jokes on you. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. Yes, but like now nah, he been the same way, man. Just crazy, arrogant. Um, he got a little, little something's off with him. I can't. I'll, I'll never know what it is, but he's like a, it's like a tick, something a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe on the spectrum, somewhat. Maybe slightly. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder what his diagnose, what he'd be diagnosed as, yeah, yeah before yeah, yeah. bipolar or whatever. Maybe it was always bipolar. Whatever he is, but you know, in in his uh, in his arrogant moments, in his wild moments, an asshole, in his love for the music and like being a really skilled individual, passionate, amazing, you know. And then all these things keep you kind of on your toes because you never know. It's like some real mafia boss type shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, you don't know what you're going to get, depending on what day Uh. and what movie. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I feel that. I feel that. Are are there any other producers that you could you could probably um, touch with the same brush as 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 this? That you're like, yo, they're not anything like what you'd expect in the studio. These guys are on us on another level. No, most people were pretty true to who they were. Red Man was weird when I met him, when we worked with him. Um, Red Man was weird to me when I met him, man. Yeah, you're crazy. But, yeah. you know, this was on our album that never came out. So I worked, you know, in Red Man. There is a dark side, Red Man. Right. You know, I was driving him around in my mom's Ford Taurus, like, going, taking him to Red Foo's house to record. <laughs> just yeah. put that in the sentence, write that in the sentence. It's just um, Crazy. That's crazy. You got to be a bit kooky, haven't you, to be like? I got to watch. Eric, I got to watch Eric Sermon make a beat from scratch right in front of me. That was amazing. What? Um, I've seen Premier make beats. You know, and I, let's not talk about Premier. Obviously, he's the, the he's goat. goat. Yeah, for real. And so, you know, just and I'm blessed because the Alchemist. I got to meet Premier and become friends with Premier and work with Premier. Like that shit is crazy. Still till this day. I'm never, I'll never snap out of that. Uh, no. And so, you know what I mean? So, the, yeah, it's just like awesome experiences that in, that help me when I go sit down. But mainly, you know, mainly it's Alchemist. That would be my number one. Alchemist is, uh, he's, he's, they, they, uh, they got rid of the uh, photocopier when they created him, man. Like he's, 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 he's his blueprint. I mean, it's, Talk to me about working with Alchemist, bro. Uh, it's never, it's never been work. There is no work. It just happens. Love it. Yeah. There's no work. He, um, you know, I, he could rap. He could really rap, actually. And you know, some people know that, and some people have no idea. But he could really rap. And so well, he was in the Hooligans, right? Yeah, and even then, he was killing shit. Let's be honest. So the, the um with a little girl voice, you know, like he was killing shit. The, um, I think if you're a rock producer and you're producing a band and you go, you're talking to the guitar player and you're saying, Hey man, you're, you're not playing it right. Or you were playing it. I heard it. Well, the guitar player can go here, you show me what the fuck you're talking about then. And the producer can maybe not play it as good, but he can go I'm I'm kind of talking about like this. Then the band's going to respect the producer more because yeah, he might have not played it as good as they can, but he's not like he's real. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, that's the same way it is with Alchemist. Is like he could rap. So if you're gonna go in the booth, it better be like tight because he can hear what you're doing. It's not like a mystery to him. Yeah, because mm-hmm. he's got all of his skill sets. He knows what's yeah, going so on. Like, there's not. Oh, you're that's a two bar pattern. Oh, then you did. 
you did two there and then you made up for it by doing six here and that equals eight. I get it. Uh, uh, like, it, <laughs> it, you're not, yeah, you're not shocking him. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, so you got to imagine. Can you imagine like, the, you know, shocking him, actually shocking sometimes, him? Sometimes yeah. there's people I've seen them like, what the fuck? You know, it happens. Planet Asia comes out of the booth, Conway or something. What the fuck? You know, but, um, but the, I think the lesson of it with him is like, get it tight before you go in there because it's this is going to be it once you record it wow yeah i mean these are producer stories that rarely get uh get cited and it's it's just fucking all it's it's awe inspiring that shit inspires me that's like yo that level of what you provide that level and attention to detail still matters even in this era of sample packs etc and i could yeah right i could tell you this too if you're you know wondering like if you're trying to impress alchemist or whatever he's much more concerned with emotion and what's coming out of it than the technical side of it you know so mm -hmm. it's like you don't need to wow him with syllables it just needs to feel right and what about you what what what's your priority what's your What's the, what? What do you want out of collaboration? With him, or or just when I write? Just when you write, when you collaborate with people, when when you're in the studio working. The writing, I I don't think about the uh, the technical side as much as other people do. So either that's my greatest asset, or it's my biggest fault. Um, I came up on wild technical shit. I have Ferrum, biggest Ferrum Mach fan. Mm. Two thumbs, it's me. You know what I'm saying? Like, Hell it's yeah. Like, uh, uh, right, and I came up on Freestyle Fellowship and Hieroglyphics and Farsight and, and, I, and, a, lot of, and a lot of shit that wasn't, wasn't, was no slouch. You know what I mean? And so, mm. and I, like, I know what, I know what I'm, I, I can do that, but that's not what's in my heart. And so what I do is what feels right to me. And I think that's what's got me attracted people to me is I'm just doing what feels right. Your now, lyrical maybe there play, could be a bro. time I push that. There could be times I push the envelope harder and maybe somebody's looking for that. Can you double time for me? Can you do this for me? Can you do that? But to me, it's like, eh, okay, maybe you should have someone else do that because I'm just, and so maybe I'm limiting myself. Sometimes I agree with them. And then other times I'm like, yeah, but at least I stand for something, you know, and at least I'm, I'm true to what I'm doing. That's your style, like with with vote with with your lyrics. It, there's a there's there's a play on the consonants and on the vowels and the the delivery. It's crafted. You're an artisan. Well, to me, I I liked music most. Music was the winner to me. I yeah. I, I liked music. I mean, I liked watching people freestyle or battle, but really, I loved a tribe called Quest, or I loved Kanye West, or I loved music you know and in a lot of the music i never really listened to q-tip and was like "Ooh, bar you know i never like it was never like judging him like that it was just like i love this fucking song so much yeah i don't know what to do with myself you know what i mean and you know uh uh like kanye you know they say you could rap for anything except for jesus like, like he couldn't even get the words out right <laughs> but like yeah. i felt that so much though <laughs> it was like yes you know what i mean and so it's like Sometimes to me, like the less technical things are the greatest ones, you know, like people who just rhyme two, like they rhyme one time and then they rhyme the next sentence with that two bars mm. and then they move on. They don't do four and eight bar schemes. They, they just boom, conversation, boom, conversation. I feel like you're right in front of me talking to me when you rap like that. That's so what you sound that, like. That, that's less technical. That's technically less technical. But to me, sometimes that jumps right over somebody who's like, showing you so much that they can do it yeah the, it's, it's it's style over substance isn't it to me it wins who the fuck am I <laughs> um, evidence it's been a fucking pleasure bro this has been amazing it's been good I've really enjoyed chopping it up getting back in the mix uh, I really appreciate you joining me and the, the gang over here on the, on the Killer Keller podcast. Hopefully I can put out more records so I can talk to you more. <laughs>
Yeah, well, please do. More records, yeah. <laughs> no, for real, though, it's, it's, it's a pleasure to, to talk to you. Your name has been coming up for many, many years. So, respect. Enough respect, my brother, and I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks so much, Evidence. Peace. I'm learning Volume 1 LP, 25th of June. Evidence, hold tight. Don't forget, sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend and don't talk to anybody I wouldn't, all right? You stay lucky, people. Peace. Peace.